Hello, my name is Stuart Clark, and in this video we're going to take a look at Nuix Context and how to use the OrientDB graph database to facilitate and accelerate your forensic analysis and post-incident autopsy investigations. What you see right now is the Nuix Context interface, and we've done an investigation and we have a number of items currently on the, the Context canvas. These are items that have been determined as relevant throughout the investigation. And as you can see, they are grouped by their evidence item and some links have been drawn already. What we can do as normal is we can turn the labels on for these items and we can get an idea um, of what these items actually are. So here we have a, a CSV file um, reference within the Windows registry. So with a, a graph database, we have two concepts. We have um, a vertex and an edge. So each one of these icons is referred to as a vertex. So we store these items in the graph database and they are the vertex themselves. Now when we create a relationship between two vertex, very similar to what we have in this middle section here, this relationship, this line, is called an edge. So these are our vertex and these are our edges. And we can have multiple types of vertex and multiple different edges attached to one given vertex. So how can a graph database help us in our investigations? Well, it can help us build up relationships as we see here. We can build relationships between different types of data and then those relationships will automatically be shown to us throughout our investigations. What a graph database can also allow us to do is to build up a dossier um, and a summary for reporting purposes of our investigation findings. So this would allow us to connect people to user accounts, connect user accounts to computers, and subsequently connect all of the activity on those computers to that user account and subsequently to the person. It's a very, very powerful way of building up a picture of activity and we'll see how we can do that throughout this video. So the first thing that we're going to do is we have some vertex, we have some edges. These are traditional Nuix items um, and we can see them on our canvas right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to manually create a new vertex. So I'm going to create a vertex, it's not a Nuix item, it's a new item that I'm going to bring into my investigation and store within my graph. When I create a vertex, I need to give the vertex a name. Um, and it's good to be consistent with how you're naming your vertex. Uh, and I'll touch on the importance of that in just a little bit um, more detail later on. So at the moment, I'm going to create a vertex called People. I can upload a custom icon. So if I wanted to, to maybe upload a, a picture of an individual, I could upload that icon here. The GUID is automatically generated for us and we need to assign a type for our vertex and our vertex can have many types. So we can give it the person type, uh, we can give it another type as well. So we may want to call this um, suspects as well. So we've created a vertex, it's called people and it is of two types, person and suspect. We can add some more information to our vertex if we want. These are optional. So we can add a date. So let's say I was investigating Joe Blogs. I created a vertex for Joe Blogs, uploaded a picture. I may want to add a date, which is perhaps the date where Joe Blogs resigned from an organization. I may want to store that information, and that could be the date that I store against the vertex. I can add some, a description to my vertex and I can also add some custom properties to my vertex as well. So quite like custom metadata with Muix, I can assign multiple pieces of metadata against a given vertex. But for now we're just going to go ahead and create this vertex. And as you see, it will be brought onto our graph canvas. So we now have this people vertex on the graph. I can edit the vertex, but actually what I'm going to do now is create a relationship and add an edge. 
So as a result of my investigation, I happen to know that people relates to BK. So BK is actually a user account. So I need to give my edge a label. And again, try and be consistent with your labeling. So we've created a label here. We've created a label on our edge called user account. And I can add more labels if I want, but we'll just go for one because it, it helps keep it consistent. And there we have, we created our relationship. We created a graph relationship. We now have a people vertex and an edge that links that people vertex to this user account with BK. And suddenly we start to build up a picture of activity. We can continue to build up relationships in this way. And throughout our investigations, what we may do is we may find ourselves falling into a pattern. And it's important to fall into a pattern. So if in your investigations you're always looking to investigate people and maybe objects such as USB devices and computers and you like to connect that information perhaps with location information um, or perhaps you like to group all files together and all deleted files together what you'll subsequently end up doing is you'll create multiple vertex to represent all of those different pieces of activity. So you'll have a people vertex and that will link together all of your user accounts. You may also have a files vertex or a deleted files vertex for example and then you can build relationships up of all the deleted files and you can link those deleted files to a person. If you build up a template, template like this, it's useful to, to export the template out. So once you've got a template of vertex, you can export that information out as a GraphML file. Now the GraphML file is the, the universal way of transporting graph database data. So you can move graph database relationships from one graph to another. And UX allows you to do that. So what we could do, let's assume we've built up our template of five or six different vertex types. We have the ability to, to import and export various different GraphML files. So if we just right click, go to selection, you will see we have the option here to export. So we can export our current selection to a GraphML file. That then allows you to save your settings and you can move those settings to any new X case file. So that may, means you have a very consistent way of conducting your investigation. And in any context job, you can bring those GraphML files back into your project. You can import the GraphML back in. So the GraphML files are of a specific format for new X. So we generate them in a specific format and the GraphML format requires that each entry has a V type. It also has a GUID and it has a date. So at the moment, only Nuix generated GraphML files can be used within Nuix. However, if you do import GraphML files from elsewhere, you could um, initiate a script to be able to add that and additional metadata in. Now what we have up here is a search area. So throughout my investigation, as I build up my vertex and as I build up my edges, I may want to, I may forget about them or I may want to hide them from my graph for a period of time. Well, all of those different vertex and edges become available from this list and I can quickly retrieve them. So if I wanted to retrieve all device objects that are created. We can run a quick search and we can see that I have four different vertex here that were actually assigned the vertex type of device. So very, very quickly you can use this list to bring information back. So if we do a search for log, we don't have any log ones in this particular case. So we use this search box to see all of the different vertex and edges that have been created and we can bring those back onto the graph at any time throughout our investigation.
So there's a huge amount of capability here. And I'm just going to switch now to a new, another Nuix case where I've built up a dossier of activity throughout my investigation. And this is something that I could save off as a template and repeat and use in all of my different investigations. So now what we see after I've really leveraged the capabilities of the graph is I've been able to plot out this map of activity within the system. So from the top we can see we have a people vertex and we have two edges relating to uh, another vertex called deliver and there is an edge off that person which is actually a Windows user account. So we have a person called deliver and we've been able to link that user account together. Here we have an unknown person and we've actually linked that to a user account called BK. That user account BK has lots of activity. So what we have here are the event log entries that actually show that user account BK being created. So we can see here that the user account was created, the user account BK was created, and we can extract the metadata of when that activity occurred. So these are all the relevant Windows event logs relating to that user account. What we can also see is the user BK has a number of files associated with them. And all of these files are listed out here. These could be link files, they could be registry entries as well. But we've pieced together all of those relevant files and they all fall under this user account. We can also see there's a little grouping here of deletion um, and deleted files. Again, all associated with that user account BK. Now what we also see here is objects. And we can start tying users to objects. But we have, ob we have two object types. We have a computer and we have two computers here. This computer itself has some software on it. And what we can see is all of the different executable files that have been relevant to my investigation. And we have relationships built, we have edges built with their equivalent prefetch entries. So what this now shows me is I have a computer with a file called friendly.exe and this prefetch entry tells me that friendly.exe was executed on the 10th of April and it has been run once. Looking at USB devices, we can see that we have three USB devices here and one of which, this one over here, we can obviously pull out the friendly name but we can also start building relationships with link files so we can actually see that this particular USB device was actually a USB volume called DUSB and it was assigned the E drive letter. So I'm sure you'll appreciate that this is a very powerful way of being able to represent activity as a consequence of doing our investigation. We can suddenly see how all of the different artifacts and evidence items which we found link together. And the real power of a graph database is there is no limit to how far this can go. We can grow this up, we can scale this up, or we can keep it quite refined. And it becomes very consistent and very portable across our different cases. So I hope you found this video useful and thank you for watching today.